What's up guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about space. No, not astronauts or aliens, but creative space. The space that we work and play and create in. I'm gonna share with you what it took to transform the small workroom that we have into a YouTube studio for me to start this channel. I think it's important to understand the role that space plays in the life of a creative. Space can inspire us and motivate us, or it can discourage us and aggravate us. I actually started this YouTube channel back in the fall of 2021 with the intent to do a full-on YouTube video every week, but I quickly got frustrated with it because I didn't have good space to work in. At that time, we had set this room up for homeschooling, even though we homeschool 99% of the time at our kitchen counter. So this room set here full of stuff that we never used and we never came in here, but we had designated this room for that purpose. And I didn't want to take this room over to make it my home workspace because I felt like I was taking something from my kids. But the reality is we never used this space. And so it was just kind of sitting here. This room is nine by 11 feet. And while there are definitely smaller rooms out there to work with, this room is pretty small to accommodate all of the different things I wanted to do in here. So this room is actually set up kind of multi-purpose. And as I give you a quick tour of the room, you're gonna see how different things come out at different times for different reasons. And throughout this video, I'm going to talk about the stuff that I bought specifically for YouTube and how much I spent on it. Because one of the things that I feel like it's helpful to know if you are going to try to do something yourself is, well, what gear do you need to really do it halfway decent? And how much is that going to cost you? Now, a quick disclaimer, I had some of this gear already. And so my point of entry may not be as high as it will be for somebody that doesn't have any gear and is looking to start from scratch. A couple of years ago, I was watching Donna Did It, which is an incredible channel that'll really educate you on videography, color grading, best use of equipment and gear. He's, he's one of the best. And he had this video where he took his nine by nine room and built his YouTube studio out of it. And he walks through every detail about that room from how he treated it for sound to how he built out lighting to his camera, to his workflow. All of this, it was really cool to see. But as I was watching it, he has a level of gear and equipment that just is not accessible to me in this season of my life. So as he's listing his gear and I'm like writing it down, I'm looking up the cost of this equipment and it was far beyond what I could invest in this season. Now I'm a big advocate for buying used. So some of the gear I'm gonna walk you through, I bought it used and I'll tell you what I bought it for. And everything I talk about today, including Donna's video, is linked below and you can find it yourself. These are not affiliate links. I am not in the current season of my life or in this YouTube channel to go get affiliate links for everything. So free links below, I get nothing from it. Check it out. And let me last add that when you're looking at those links below, you're going to see a link from our sponsor, Very Good Presets. It's pretty silly to call it a sponsor because this is in fact my website. I just launched Very Good Presets just recently because my presets are very fine detailed presets. They're not your typical, hey, let me throw something together and sell it. No, these are very purposeful for me and they are things that I have actually used and tried to modify to be universal because I've shot on Canon, Sony, Nikon, Leica, I'm able to test my presets out on a wide range of raw files. And this first offering at Very Good Presets is an emulation of Portra 400. Over the last several years, I've picked up a few different Portra 400 presets and they have never looked quite like Portra 400. This is one of the greatest film stocks and I believe my preset captures it fairly well or as well as you can possibly do with a digital camera. I'm all about editing in a filmic style and you can see a video on how to do that right above us or check out Very Good Presets and pick up the Portra 400 pack. Okay, so let's get started and we're gonna start with the hardware. The first thing I'm gonna point out are C stands. Before this YouTube channel, I actually had one C stand that I used for flat lays. A flat lay is a style of product photography that I specialize in and so I needed a C stand rather than a fancy tripod to be able to get the reach that I needed for my flat lays. 
The nice thing about a C-stand is that it has a lot of different attachments and you can use it for a number of different reasons, whether you're holding a camera, holding a microphone, or holding a light. When it was time to start my YouTube channel, I bought a second C-stand. Now I got these on Amazon and these are newer C-stands. I think that's how you say it, or is it newer? Maybe it's newer. They cost 160. They are very versatile, and so I recommend that if you're doing anything at home or in a studio, you have at least one C stand. Next up, let's talk about the lighting. When you watch my videos, you're only seeing one key light. I don't have any other lights. This is just the one. Now, on Donna's video, he shared that he was using these aperture lights and light domes, and those are incredible pieces of equipment. I went for a cheaper option and got the Small Rig RC120B. I went for this light because it has white balance control. You can get cheaper lights than this one, but they don't offer white balance. This one has temperature control, and so I got it for that reason. And on this light, I got the RA55 dome. This dome was the perfect size for this space, and it came in at $110. So all in for my light setup here, I spent 370. And if you add the C stand, which cost 160, you will come up to a total of $530 for a light rig. But for me, that's all I needed. Plus I can use this light for things other than YouTube. I use it for product photography. And if I was doing any type of portrait in a room that didn't have natural light, by the way, I'm a natural light photographer, then I could use it for that as well. Now, when you watch my videos, there's always some color in the background. In fact, let me turn it on for you. Grab my phone here, and they're on. Now, Donna in his video was talking about the lights that he used under his desk. They provide some accent lighting, and they really do add a lot. But of course, the ones that he has, again, were a little outside of what I could do, and so I picked up these on Amazon. These are the brand Ambitful. The nice thing about these lights is that they are $55 each. That's right, 55 bucks. They're pretty cheap, but they have USB-C, they are Bluetooth controlled, and you have full control over the colors or anything you want through your phone. They've got mounts on the ends of them, which is really nice for attaching it to something like I have over here. And they're magnetic, which is awesome. Check it out. That's a good look, right? Actually, that color's bugging me. 55 bucks on Amazon. I've used these for product photography and accent lighting. I threw them in my van again when we went out uh, for Halloween last year with the kids and made them all red. So we were driving around with the van lit up all red. It was kind of spooky. They have a great battery life. And honestly, like, I'm really impressed with these. All right, let's talk about sound. When you see me sitting at the table and I have the mic in front of me, that is an AEA R84 ribbon mic. I did not buy this mic for this YouTube channel. I've actually had it for many years. I've shared this before, but if this is your first time, while I am a photographer and videographer, I'm also a musician and I have an extensive background in studio work, engineering, producing, and because of that, I have a pretty good selection of microphones as well as various other things. I take audio pretty serious in the music world. I probably should take it more serious here for YouTube, especially in the beginning. And that microphone is incredible. I think it has really natural audio, and so I use that whenever I have a mic in front of me. Now, if you were to buy the AEA microphone, it would cost you brand new $1,100. So it is not a cheap microphone, but it would be so much overkill for just YouTube. So don't get that mic. Get that mic if you're doing studio work and then you can grab it for YouTube. Now, the next mic I have is more for general purpose videography work, but I also have used it on this channel when I feel like going through the process of hooking it up. And that is the Sennheiser MKH 416P48. This is a very natural mic with a good throw range. This is actually the mic that Donna recommended, so I picked up this microphone, and it really is wonderful. The Sennheiser P48 comes in right at $1,000 new. However, I got this microphone used for $600 which was an incredible deal. But most of the time, like on this video, I'm using the Sony K3M system. This is a hot shoe mounted preamp and microphone that converts the signal to digital and allows it to sync perfectly with the video. I think it sounds great and it works well, especially for just a quick on the go setup. I use this mic most of the time. The Sony K3M will cost you $600 brand new, but I bought it used for 450 from B&H. I'm a big advocate for used gear. 
especially if you're buying used gear either locally from somebody you can meet face to face or you're buying from a reputable shop online like B&H with their extensive used section. Okay, let's talk about the camera. The camera you're watching me on right now is the Sony a7S III. I bought this camera for video work. It's perfect. If you were to buy this camera new, I believe it's between $3,000 and $3,500 depending upon if there's a sale going on or not. And you can find it used, but unfortunately I didn't buy mine used. I bought it new around the time it came out. And then there was a shortage of them, but I think they're back on the market now. The lens you're watching me on is the Sony 16-35 to GM. I mostly shoot around 20 millimeters and that's what this look is right now but I can go wider if necessary or even tighter. It just depends on how I set up and what I'm feeling in the moment. You can find this lens all day long. It's fairly old. I bought it from B&H from their used department. I wanna say for 13 or 1400. And again, I got this all before I decided to do YouTube. This is part of my photography and videography kit. Now it's very hard to do YouTube and not see yourself while you're filming. So for that reason, I picked up a Feel World F6 monitor for $190 on Amazon. There are way better monitors out there, but this is something I just mounted to my tripod and it gets the job done. It lets me see to make sure I'm in focus. Back in my earliest YouTube videos, I shot one of them and I was out of focus the whole time and never knew because I wasn't monitoring myself. Whereas right now, I can look at you, I can check the monitor, boom, I'm still in focus, so we are good to go. The last thing we'll talk about in the room is the furniture that's in the room. Now being that this room is 9 by 11, I needed furniture in here that didn't take up a lot of footprint on the floor and I really value vertical storage. The smaller the space, the more vertical storage really matters. What I'm leaning on right here and what you see in most of my videos whenever this is in the middle of the room is a Husky tool chest from Home Depot. This tool chest is not cheap, coming in at $630. It has so many purposes. It's probably the most important piece of furniture I own. It has a ton of vertical storage. I use the different drawers for different purposes and some of it has music equipment, some of it has photography accessories. Being able to cleanly and neatly store your equipment is a huge win for your space because nothing can distract a creative like clutter. I want things to be out of sight and out of mind and this gets the job done. Plus, I can stand here and work on things, which is also a huge benefit because there are times where I don't wanna sit down at the desk, so I'll just stand here with my laptop. And it, it might be a touch low for actually getting a lot of stuff done for me because I'm fairly tall, but when it comes to loading my camera bag or sorting through things or even just working on stuff quickly like Lightroom edits, sometimes I just stand here and use it as a standing desk and it's pretty awesome. And of course, you've seen it pulled over, it's on wheels, I just literally corner it over to the middle of the room and I use it as a table to do the YouTube videos. The desk you see in the background, it, it, it is a small desk, but all I use is a MacBook. So I don't need a ton of desktop all over me. I have this table for whenever I need more space and I have that for just getting work done. And again, if you take a look at it, vertical storage for the win. I'm able to display things that inspire me. I'm also able to store things on there to grab really quickly when I need to. And the desk only comes off the wall about a foot and a half. Right here, I have a bamboo coat rack. Being that we live in a very small but beautiful home right here in the Bay Area of California, closet space is a little limited. So we actually have a couple of these in the house that we use to store things like coats and jackets. And again, vertical storage. There are two racks underneath the jackets. I also use this rack to store a couple of bags. So right here on the end, I've got one of my backpacks. On the other side, I have one of my slings. I just hang them on and they get stored very easily and out of the way and off the floor. The best part about this rack in particular is it's $48 on Amazon. It's made of bamboo, super cheap, goes together easy, and it looks really nice. And you can see that I've attached one of the ambit full lights to the top and that's how I'm accenting that wall. Oh, you know what? I should probably save the battery on these lights. There we go. Right here at the end, I turn the lights off. This side of the room over here, the desk in the corner is an old antique desk we bought many, many years ago. We've taken it with us everywhere. Small footprint, looks great in the space. We have our home computer, which is an iMac. We use it for homeschooling. I have my little hard drive, which backs up all of my video files. And I have a guitar rack with the various guitars that I use for studio work here in this space. 
Okay, to sum it up, if you were starting a studio at home to do YouTube or some type of video podcast and you already have some camera gear or you just wanna use your phone, which is totally acceptable, you can make things with what you have and you don't have to spend a ton of money. If you were going to pick up the C-stand that I have, the lighting rig that I have, and let's say you had a camera but you didn't have a good microphone and you wanted to pick up the microphone that I have, as well as these accent lights, and a monitor to see yourself with. If you add all this up and you're in the US, after taxes, you're probably gonna be spending around $1,300, which is a lot of money, but it will get you what you need to have a somewhat self-sustaining YouTube channel that doesn't need to be upgraded every time you get 500 new followers or that isn't limiting you in getting followers. You wanna produce quality content. Of course, if you need to add a camera and a lens and some of the bigger pieces, you're gonna be spending another three to $5,000. I mean, who knows? It can be a lot really fast. And if you're looking to pick up some furniture pieces, that desk came from Wayfair, the, the tool chest came from Home Depot, the rack came from Amazon. I linked everything below or comparable below if it's not available anymore. But you can use the things that you have and just find a way to make them work for you. I already had this desk because I needed a desk at home. I didn't buy that desk to start this channel. Same with most of the things in this room, except for the $1,300 I spent to get the things that allowed me to start this channel. If you have any recommendations for how to make things better or you wanna drop your advice for someone wanting to start a channel in the comments below, feel free to do so. Be sure to check out Very Good Presets and check out the debut preset, Portra 400, and I'm even dropping a little discount code below as well, so hit that up. Like, subscribe, all of the things, drop a comment, and as always, if you leave a comment, I will try to reply to everything that gets left. I do this for every video. So be sure to leave a comment. Links are all below, hit them up, check me out, say hi on Instagram or anywhere else I might be, and I will see you next time.